Come on and grab your friends. We'll give you 107 facts about distant lands. No, oh, but seriously, we've gathered a whole whack of facts about Adventure Time's follow-up series of specials. In fact, we've collected so many that we've had to divide it into two parts, algebraic. Welcome back to Channel Frederator. Today, we're going to fly through 107 facts about Adventure Time Distant Lands episodes one and two. More to come very soon. Ready to roll? Let's get things started. Number one. Adventure Time Distant Lands first aired on June 25th, 2020, almost two years after the Adventure Time series finale, Come Along With Me. Number 2. Distant Lands came about as a result of the success of other Adventure Time specials and miniseries like Stakes and Elements. Writers pitched ideas that might work well as longer format stories in this same vein, with the ideas for Bimo and Obsidian getting partially developed. However, the production on these lengthy tales was stopped when Adventure Time ended. These ideas stuck around though, and when HBO got involved, they were brought back to life. Number 3. Cartoon Network and Frederator collaborated once again to put these new stories together, but this time HBO Max got involved. The series was released on the HBO Max streaming service. Number 4. The series was also released on DVD and Blu-ray on March 8th, 2022. Number 5. Adam Muto, longtime Adventure Time executive producer, returned to lead the charge on distant lands. Number 6. Some Adventure Time writers and storyboarders returned as well, including Jack Pendarvis, Anthony Birch, Jesse Moynihan, Christina Catucci, Charlie Feldman, Kate Sang, Ashlyn Anstey, Jim Campbell, Iggy Craig, Megan Fisher, Laura Gnetzker, Hannah K. Nystrom, Maya Peterson, Anna Sivertson, Mickey Quinn, and Serena Wu. Number 7. Originally, there were only supposed to be three episodes of Distant Lands, not four. Wizard City was a late addition and actually bumped the episode together again up in the queue. Number 8. The first episode of Distant Lands is titled BMO, and of course, it features the golden-hearted sentient video game console. Nikki Yang returns to voice this iconic member of the Adventure Time gang. Number 9. Nikki Yang's favorite line is BMO always bounces back. Number 10. Bimo's ship is also made by Moko, as evidenced by the huge Moko logo printed on the side. Number 11. The song Bimo sings as they hurtle across the galaxy is called Fresh Potatoes and is written by Jack Pendarvis, longtime voice actor and writer for Adventure Time. Number 12. Bimo is playing what appears to be a ukulele. Check it out, four strings. However, the sticker inside of the sound hole says guitar, and the sound coming from the instrument is definitely more guitar-like. Number 13. When Bimo talks to football in the reflection of the ship's windows, this is technically the first time we meet Bimo's alter ego. Timeline-wise, anyways. Football's true first appearance is in the episode Five Short Grables, released on April 9th, 2012. Hello there. Oh, hello. Who are you? My name is Fubo. Number 14. Although Mars has two moons, Phobos and Deimos, the Mars that all of Blast's Bimo's ship straight past only seems to have one. Number 15. When Bimo's ship is hijacked by Olive, she passes through a series of colorful lights that resemble a sequence from 2001 A Space Odyssey. Number 16. Sticking with the BMO movie references, how about those Martian potatoes, right? This could be a direct reference to the Martian. All natural, organic, Martian grown potatoes. You don't hear that every day, do you? Number 17. One more movie reference for now. BMO says to Hugo, I'm your Huckleberry, after he explains that he needs the crystal from the jungle pod. This is a quote from the movie Tombstone. Don't any of you have that gush of paper blood? I'm your Huckleberry. Essentially meaning I'm the person for this job. Of course, it's also a reference to Huckleberry Finn, the eponymous main character from Mark Twain's famous novel. Number 18. Y5, formerly known as Y4, sort of resembles other Fiona from the Adventure Time episode Fiona and Cake and Fiona. Number 19. Another character Y5 resembles is Buster Baxter from Arthur. Anthropomorphic cartoon rabbits tend to have a lot in common, but these two look really similar. Number 20. Y5's voice actor, Gloria Curta, might sound pretty familiar to you. She's also the voice of young Tifa Lockhart from the Final Fantasy VII Remake, Chloe in The Loud House, and she also plays Becca Frank in Crown Lake. Number 21. The Shell Army member with the ability to produce stink sacks is named Cole, and he's voiced by an actor who is also named Cole. Yep, Cole Sanchez, also known for his work as a writer, storyboard artist, and director on Adventure Time, voices this alien. 
Number 22. The elf leader, Shafter, is voiced by John Hodgman, who you might recognize as Charlie Jones and the other father from Coraline. Number 23. Y5's backpack is full of good stuff, like a first aid kit, a water bottle, and a magnifying glass, all necessary components of being a field scientist. Number 24. At a couple points during this episode, in scenes at different markets across the drift, beings from the same species as Cuber or the Grable's guy can be seen. Cuber's kind do not have an actual name in the Adventure Time universe. The events of this episode, however, take place chronologically before Adventure Time's first episode, whereas Grables are being told from 1,000 years into the future. Number 25. There's also a Voidcaster running a stand in the market. They seem to be selling rocks of some kind. Number 26. When the airlock opens up during the game of Go Fish, the stink sack producing bug says, I've got a bad feeling before he's cut off. This is a reference to the recurring line, I've got a bad feeling about this throughout the Star Wars franchise. I have a bad feeling about this. Number 27. Y5's wristwatch computer communicator makes very similar noises to that of an iPhone when receiving messages. Number 28. Bimo seems to think that Earth is called Bimo World, but she is right about the gigantic chunk missing from the planet. That, of course, was caused by the Great Mushroom War. Number 29. Space lards make a return in BMO where they're being wrestled by a squid-like farmer with appendages specifically for tending the land. Not much is known about space lards, other than the fact that they can see Finn's astral form and they're pretty friendly overall. Number 30. Seago is heard singing the Fraser theme when BMO and Y5 first run into them at the trash heap. They even call out Fraser's catchphrase, Good night, Seattle. Good night, Seattle. Number 31. Seago, a trashy robot, is voiced by Simone Geertz, who is well known for making trashy robots for fun. She's even got a YouTube channel for this. Number 32. Y5 speaks binary as they make their way to the underground rabbit zone. Specifically, she says 011100, 0111000011, 0111000011, 0111000011, 0110111 which translates to drum roll please pass nine word very secure number 33 it's funny that the rabbits all live in an underground series of tunnels, as rabbits actually do that in real life on Earth. These rabbit holes are also known as burrows. Number 34. BMO's reboot noise is almost indistinguishable from the startup sound of a Macintosh 2. This personal computer was designed, manufactured, and sold by Apple from March 1987 to January 1990. I guess Apple really made some iconic noises. Number 35. The Pinchy Bugs' names are Sweetie and Darling, and they're voiced by siblings Anthony and Ashley Birch, respectively. Ashley also voices popular video game characters like Alloy from Horizon Zero Dawn, Chloe Price from Life is Strange, and Tiny Tina from the Borderlands series. She's even the voice of Sasha Brous in the English dub of Attack on Titan. Number 36. BMO treats USB sticks like little digital cigarettes, consuming it and crushing it underfoot while saying ooh. That's smooth data. Just remember kids, you shouldn't always copy what you see on TV. Number 37. The not-so-robotic Mr. M is voiced by the same voice actor who plays Finn's dad, Martin Mertens, Stephen Root. This has got some people speculating that Mr. M might even be Martin in disguise, backed up by the fact that he shares the same selfish attitude and has human feet underneath all that robotic stuff. Number 38. When Mr. M is left floating in space after the Unity Pod takes off, he says, Here comes the rascal. Well, here comes the rascal. Which is something that Martin also says in the Adventure Time episodes On the Lamb and Min and Marty. Here comes the rascal! Number 39. Mr. M even does the classic in response to something cool. I mean, entertaining guests is no armor of Zeldron, but it'll do in a pinch. Number 40. In the end, it was officially revealed that Mr. M is indeed Martin Mertens. Yep, a storyboard for the Fiona and Cake episode Prismo the Wishmaster shows that they are the same person. Number 41. 
Y5 and Mr. M end up playing a holographic version of Card Wars, meaning Card Wars predates Finn and Jake playing it by a long shot. I wonder if anyone's developed a Card Wars dual disc. Number 42. Tech bro evil mastermind Hugo is voiced by Randall Park, best known for his roles as Jimmy Woo in WandaVision, President Kim in The Interview, and Louis Huang in Fresh Off the Boat. He was also in the series Blockbuster, but I'm sure he'd like me to omit that. Whoops. Number 43. Bimo names the crab they hitch a ride on Krusty, which is a play on crustacean, the invertebrate animals of the subphylum Crustacea. Number 44. Football says dirt hole a lot apparently, as they shout it out when Bimo gets trapped in the jungle pod's chasm, something they also shout during the Adventure Time episode, Football. Number 45. When Bimo dies, we're reintroduced to the rainbow-hued Bimo counterparts that first appeared in the more you mow, the mo you know. Bimo contemplates death quite a lot for a robot. Number 46. Hugo's backstory, as told by Seago, was animated by David Ferguson, who also animated the episode Water Park Prank. Number 47. This retelling of events also shows that more than one insane weapon was used during the Great Mushroom War. Multiple mushroom clouds go off, but the thing that takes the chunk out of the Earth appears to be an enormous electrical ball. Wonder what that's about. Number 48. Bimo runs into Baby Finn and Teenage Jake at the classic tree fort, with Finn essentially looking like a shrunk down version of himself, except with a little ducky on his shirt, and Jake going through an obvious rebellious phase. Love the hairdo. Number 49. This episode is the first one to take place before the events of the main series, excluding flashbacks and dreams. How exciting for Bimo. Number 50. This is also the first canon episode without the iconic Adventure Time snail making an appearance. I guess the Lich doesn't care much about the drift, or he's planning something else on Earth. According to Adam Muto, this was a conscious choice to help differentiate distant lands from the original series. Number 51. Y5's dad is voiced by Tom Kenny, Adventure Time's very own Ice King, also known for plenty of other iconic roles like SpongeBob SquarePants. He is playing it a little straighter in this episode, however. Number 52. During the end credits of BMO, there's a very realistic render of BMO with a bunch of stuff floating around it. Well, actually, it just appears to be a very realistic render. It's actually a real life model of BMO that got sent out into actual outer space. Yup. Bob Herzberg made this prop BMO and it was launched into space as part of the Quest Institute's quest for space. BMO even made it to the International Space Station. Number 53. The sword at the very beginning of each episode is the same sword that has been used since the dawn of Adventure Time, sliding into the text of the title. This time, it reflects and shows off a handful of classic characters. Princess Bubblegum, Marceline, Bimo, Lumpy Space Princess, Ice King, Gunther, Flame Princess, Jake, and Finn. You can even hear an assortment of quotes from each character layered over each other, finishing with Finn saying algebraic. Oh, Number 54. This title sword, interestingly enough, is never wielded by Finn or anyone else. It's seen in every episode, but has never been used. Must be some crazy sword. Number 55. Finn and Jake get a classic fist bump in as the episode starts, this time in super close high definition. Who knew that Jake had five fingers? Number 56. The episode BMO won the Kids Screen Award for Best One-Off Special or TV Movie in 2021. Number 57. The second episode, Obsidian, was nominated for a handful of awards, including Outstanding Writing Team for a Daytime Animated Program by the Daytime Children's Programming and Animation Emmy Awards, and Outstanding Animated Series by the Gay Emmys. Number 58. Obsidian first aired on November 19th, 2020. Number 59. At the beginning of Obsidian, there's a dud bomb with the phrase Gone Fission sketched in, along with an image of someone reeling in a bomb from a boat. Very punny. Number 60. Glass Boy says crack a lot as an expletive. Seems to be a funny, inoffensive reference to his number one imperfection. Number 61. Michaela Dietz voices Glass Boy. Fans of animation will also know her as the voice of Amethyst from Steven Universe and Daryl McGee from The Ghost and Molly McGee. Number 62. Glass Boy was originally a placeholder name for the character, but eventually it stuck and it was never changed. Number 63. The Glass people have an interesting interpretation of Marcy's breakup song, Woke Up. They seem to think that she's mad at a coconut, which is fun. Apparently, a multi-generational game of broken telephone got them to this point. They 
donked it up, as Marcy would put it. Number 64, Woke Up is performed by Olivia Olsen and Zuzu. Zuzu also helped with the Glass Boy number, Eternity With You, and the song Not Myself from Fiona and Cake. Number 65, P-Bubs and Marcy build Ikea furniture together, even if they don't call it Ikea furniture. I recognize those little wooden pegs and Allen keys. You can't trick me, that's Swedish craftsmanship. Number 66, there's a photo strip featuring pictures of Bubblegum and Marceline on the side of their fridge. These pictures first appeared in the Adventure Time episode, Catch Up. Number 67. Obsidian features a whole whack of new song, kicking things off with It's Funny, featuring Charlotte Nickdow, Alex Senwald, and Pete Toms. Number 68. Charlotte Nickdow is also the voice actor behind See-Through Princess and Ancient Glass Princess. Number 69. Apparently, Marcy learned how to sleep in a bed. She's pictured snoozing right alongside Bubblegum as opposed to simply floating above like she's seen doing in the past. Maybe she learned to enjoy a good old-fashioned mattress to keep Bubbling happy and healthy. Number 70. PB wears a pair of Lady Rainicorn slippers while hanging out and reading a magazine, a reference to the episode where she teamed up with her to rescue Finn and Jake, Lady and Peebles. Number 71. Bubblegum isn't the only one with special slippers. Simon has a pair of Gunter slippers too. Fancy footwear featuring friends. How fun. Number 72. Simon plays what looks and sounds like an ooh omnichord at the Dirt Beer Guy open mic. He's even playing a cover of Remember You. How sweet. Number 73. Marcy and PB appear to be playing snakes and ladders, but the snake is one-eyed and there are no ladders when Simon shows up with Glass Boy. Number 74. Marcy is also wearing the shirt her dad gave her in the Adventure Time episode of Marcy and Hunson when Glass Boy shows up to worship her. Number 75. Marceline still has her axe base handed down as a family heirloom and modified into a musical instrument. Unfortunately, it does not survive the episode. Number 76. Marcy's voice actor, Olivia Olsen, returns to voice her once more and sing all of her songs, naturally. You might also recognize Olsen from her role on Phineas and Ferb as Vanessa Doofenshmirtz or on the Powerpuff Girls as Bliss. She also plays that little dude's love interest, Joanna Anderson, in the Christmas rom-com Love Actually. Number 77. Simon, long after losing his powers, still likes to hang out in a blue robe near the freezer. I guess you never really stop being the Ice King. Number 78. The Moral Returns Princess Bubblegum has the legendary bird carry in her barrier-producing technology when Marcy's song singing doesn't put Larvo in his place. The Moro was first introduced, albeit a little unclearly, in the Adventure Time episode Death in Bloom. Number 79. Young Marcy, in flashbacks, is voiced by Audrey Bennett, also known for her role as Gwen Stacy in Spidey and His Amazing Friends, and Louisa in the series New Amsterdam. Number 80. In Marcy's flashback, the scorpion on top of the skeleton sports a hat with the cool S on it, also known as a Stussy S. But did you notice that the skeleton was also wearing a Stussy S chain? Now that is a cool duo. Number 81. Marcy's mom, Elise, is played by Erica Luttrell, also known for her roles in Westworld, Salvation, and Mayans MC. Number 82. This episode reveals that Marcy's mom did indeed survive the Mushroom War, but got sick as a result. She's shown to live in the same trailer that she was first seen in in the Adventure Time episode, Everything Stays. Number 83. At the gas station where Marcy's mom Elise is working on a motorcycle, you can see lots of graffiti, including the phrases gas for meat trade and I love petrochem, pointing to a Mad Max style post-apocalyptic society where gas is a primetime commodity. The whole meat thing also points to a very disturbing reality. Number 84. The bike Elise is fixing at the gas station is very similar to a 2000 Honda CB600F. Number 85. There is a brand of bottled water in this post-apocalyptic world called WH2Odor, a play on water and H2O, the chemical formula for water. Number 86. Atop the cans of pork and beans and elephant brand whatever canned goods, there's a cockroach that bears a close resemblance to the one that befriended Wally -E in the Pixar movie of the same title. Number 87. Glass Boy is into manga, meaning that manga is a thing in the land of Ooh. Who knew? Number 88. The dark, deadly creatures spawned by Molto Larvo are known as glass acids. Nice. Number 89. Sandy, the most vocal of the three advisors who keep poo-pooing see-through princess's ideas, is voiced by Maria Bamford. She's quite prolific, voicing characters in Barnyard, Word Girl, The Legend of Korra, Rick and Morty, Big Mouth, and more. Number 90. 
The other two royal advisors are known as Limestin and Sir Soda. Limestin is voiced by Jeff Bennett, who also voices Choose Goose and famously played Johnny Bravo. Number 91. Sir Soda is voiced by Kevin Michael Richardson, who has a lot of roles under his belt as well, including Kamek in the Super Mario Bros. movie and Donnie in Adventure Time. Number 92. Attempting to freeze Molto Larvo using candy ends up being very visually similar to the freezing of Godzilla in the 2016 kaiju movie Shin Godzilla. Number 93. Bonnie says egress a lot, a behavior that calls back to the Adventure Time episode Hall of Egress. Number 94. Before her crack, see-through princess doesn't actually have legs, she just slides everywhere. Number 95. The song Marceline sings while trapped in the furnace is called Monster, and a promotional cover of the tune is performed by artist King Princess on the official soundtrack. Number 96. The origin of Princess Bubblegum's t-shirt from Marceline, as first seen in the Adventure Time episode What Was Missing, is finally revealed in a flashback. After telling Marcy that she's always loved her songs, Peabubs remembers the show she went to where Marceline took off her shirt and threw it into the crowd, being caught by Peabubs. Number 97. Simon, along with some banana guards, Finn, and Jake's pup Bronwyn show up in a camper van to help out, but are too late. The camper van seems to be a 1977 RAF 2203 Latvia minibus. And here I was thinking it was just a Winnebago. Number 98. This is the first look folks got of Finn's Jake tattoo across his chest as he exits the van in a towel. This implies that at this point in time, Jake has potentially died, with Finn getting this tattoo to serve in his memory. Number 99. Finn also does not sport any sort of prosthetic arm. Whether this is because he recently got done with bathing, as implied by the towels, or if it's a conscious choice is up to debate. Number 100. Finn is still voiced by Jeremy Shada, but he sounds a whole lot older with a deeper voice. Number 101. Simon dances with a bespectacled Glass Kingdom citizen, invoking comparisons to his lady love and cosmic benefactor, Betty. Number 102. Pendleton Ward, the creator of Adventure Time, voices a variety of extra characters throughout the Distant Land series. Number 103. Obsidian was banned in Southeast Asia because sapphic relationships are prohibited there. Bubblegum and Marcy's relationship is definitely focused on quite heavily in this one. Number 104. According to Adam Muto, the title Obsidian is a metaphor for the most powerful fusion, having to do with Princess Bubblegum and Marceline's relationship, as well as the Glass Kingdom itself. Number 105. The album Bemo's mixtape, Gilligan Moss Mix, was released on September 18th, 2020. This isn't a soundtrack of the episode Bemo, but instead features remix music from the original series, as well as a mix of the song Eternity With You from Obsidian. The American musical duo Gilligan Moss mixed it, as you might have guessed from the title. Number 106. Adam Muto says that Obsidian happens a few years into bubbling, meaning that it happens between the Adventure Time finale, Come Along With Me, and the first episode of Fiona and Kate. Number 107. John DiMaggio returns to Adventure Time to provide a variety of additional voices throughout the Distant Land specials. In case you didn't know, he voices Jake the Dog in the Adventure Time series and is also quite famous for voicing Bender from Futurama. And that, my friends, is the perfect way to cap things off for this episode of 107 Facts. What did you think? Did you learn anything new? Which episode is your favorite? Do you prefer Fiona and Cake or Distant Lands? Or are you just truly an Adventure Time purist? Make sure you let us know down in the comments and like if you want some more. Thanks for watching and remember, Frederator loves you.